Next question is from S. Jordan 3393. You've talked about a study saying the average woman gains weight with an average intake of around 1,800 calories, but we technically need more to meet our nutrient needs. How do we combat this? Can we really eat more calories without gaining weight? I picked this question because I wanted to address uh, the annoying trainers that do this. And we haven't had someone do this in a while, but lately we've had a lot of trainers that like to go under our Q&A, our claw questions, and answer them. They're just trying to get followers. I know, and which I normally don't. I won't address until you, if you do try and say something that's mm. contradicting something that we're talking about to try and sound smart, which annoys me, right? They so, probably learned from a mastermind out there. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, in, <laughs> in the per, in the it's defense, in the defense of the person that was doing this, uh, they're not wrong, you know. But this is what annoys me is when trainers do this, when they argue over semantics, when we, we lose the desired outcome of the conversation. Desired outcome of the conversation is to address exactly what this person is asking, is getting them to understand that the average female is already consuming a super low amount of calories, and it's important that they they think about increasing the caloric intake to speed up their metabolism instead of always going down lower and lower mm -hmm. in calories. In that, combination with resistance. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That was the point of me sharing that study and sharing that, that point. What I can't stand, and it reminds me of like when we talked about I forget what, uh, oh, when I would talk about 3,500 calories equals a pound of fat. Okay, we know those uh, those are arbitrary numbers that it depends on it's, the- it It's a rough estimation. It, exactly. Yeah. It's a very rough estimation, but I used to use that a lot to get the point across when trying to explain to a client what's going on when we're talking about mm. calories in versus calories and out. Studies actually show it's 3,247. 3, yes. and that's what this this kid did. He, come, he came yeah. underneath the question and he's- you know, challenging that statement, and and he's right. Okay, he, every person is is individually different. The body is is a resilient machine. If you eat low enough calories after a while, it will lower its its maintenance levels and what it needs nutrient wise, and then that will change the RDA. And there's an individual variance, and then there's movement ball. So it's fucking nuanced as shit. But you're a moron if you're a trainer and you're always trying to explain all those nuanced things to a client who doesn't understand any of that bullshit. And the desired outcome is to get the my female client to understand that, listen, you're only eating 15 to 1,800 calories. I don't want to take you down to 1,000 calories a day just because you want to lose 15 pounds. Mm -hmm. I want to start to slowly increase your caloric intake so that you get more calories. We speed your metabolism up. You get more nutrients. So- that was the reason why I yeah. picked this question was because I wanted to address that. Well, so, okay, so back to the question. Um, and yes, you can speed up the metabolism. You do, you do need to combine it with good resistance training, though. Just bumping your calories uh, by itself will make you gain body fat. So you got to do a good resistance training program in order to do that. But back to the question, you have caloric needs, but you also have nutrient needs. Not macronutrient needs, but you have those Micro. two. But micronutrient needs as well. And so let's say you've got a slow metabolism. You're not burning a lot of calories because you're not active. You don't have a lot of muscle. You've dieted a lot in the past. And so now anything over 1,400 calories, you gain body fat. So you eat 1,400 calories a day. But it's really hard to get all the nutrients that your body needs, the micronutrients, with 1,400 calories because you get them in food. There's a couple ways you can handle this. Now, one way is the way that supplement companies love, which is – Take supp you know, supplement your nutrients without the calories. This was actually a selling point of the multivitamins that I was encouraged to sell when I was first a trainer. This is the, the point they would make, that people will cut their calories, but we need their nutrients high, so have them buy a multivitamin. Yes, technically that can help, um, but that's really a Band-Aid. There's a better solution, which is to eat more nutrient-dense foods. So eat foods that are high in micronutrients, uh, meat is a good example. High quality meat, very Organ nutrient meat. dense. Mm -hmm. Organ meat, very nutrient dense. And then, of course, there's certain plants, uh, certain vegetables and fruits that are also very uh, high in, in key nutrients. Uh, dairy, very nutrient dense. So you could do that. Um, and, and the problem is when you eat low calories and the calories that you are eating are crappy, nutrient devoid, you know, foods like chips or processed foods. Um, that don't have a lot of micronutrients and you're just getting a bunch of calories. And what ends up happening, this is one theory, is that your calories are a certain amount, but your nutrients are so low and it just stimulates more appetite because your body's like, okay, we need more vitamin D or we need more K or we need more net magnesium. 
so I'm just going to make you hungry so you can go eat more food because we got to search for the snooze. There's a theory around that, and I tend to believe that there's some that some of that is, is true. I'll be even more prescriptive with this. Like, so something that I would do with a client of mine, um, you brought up the Fit Mom bundle. This is where I would use like the RGB bundle, right? So, you know, you have Maps Anabolic Performance and Aesthetic, which is basically uh, nine plus months worth of training, and within that, you're going to go through ten different phases. So what I do with someone who's in this situation is I take them through that entire bundle and at every phase, I have them increase their calories by 100 to 200 calories a day. So if this person is currently at 16 or 1700 calories in phase one, we try and bump one to 200 calories. Then phase two, we bump another 100 to 200 calories. Then phase three, another 100 to, and I keep doing that all the way through the bundle. And the, the theory behind that or why that I've had so much success is every one of the, the phases as they go through all these programs is a new novel stimulus, which sends a signal to the body that it needs to adapt and build more muscle, which will then support the additional calories that you're intaking. And if we do it just right, right by adding 150 to 200 or so calories every time most of those calories will get allocated over to building muscle versus getting stored as body fat then by the end okay of this when you figure you're talking about a you know i said 10 phases it's like 9 months yeah you're you're talking about this person could potentially increase their calories to 26 2700 calories i had i had a, a client that i did exactly that and i was able to get her metabolism up by 850 calories a day like that's Huge. Do you know how much cardio you have to do to burn 850 calories, like yeah. two hours yeah. of cardio? And it was over the course of, I think it took us about seven or eight months, got her calories uh, up to up 850 without gaining body fat. She obviously had a little bit more muscle and strength on her body. Then it was really easy to cut her calories to get her lean. This is what she ended up with. She ended up eating more than she did when she started to lose body fat. How great is that? Right. So that's the that's the whole the premise. Ideal. That's the whole premise behind it. But yeah, when it comes to nutrients, the more food you eat, uh, the more potential nutrients you can consume. But it ma the food matters a lot. Like one ounce of, of liver, which is an organ meat that's extremely uh, nutrient dense, is going to give you way more nutrients than ten pounds of you know uh, potato chips or something like that. Like it's going to get. That's how nutrient dense it is. So nutrient density is important in your food, unless you want to supplement all the time, which there's nothing necessarily wrong with supplementing, but it is a cheap Band-Aid. Getting your nutrients from food is always the best. It's, your body assimilates it the best. It contains cofactors that enhance absorption. You get lots of other beneficial things that are in the food. It's just a better way to get your, your nutrients up. 